which will uh, which will uh, uh, help us. Uh, um, we are we want to share with all of you <clears throat> our research on the European Cloud Community and. Uh, uh, system and uh, share with you the online catalog we have prepared. So um, I will, there are a few housekeeping rules, which, oh, wait a second. Okay. Uh, I don't need to go through them, but I think most of you know, the most important is that this session is being recorded. Today's agenda, uh, there will be uh, my introduction. I uh, will share with you a few of the key results of our landscaping of the European cloud system. Then Emanuele Pristera from our partner Across Limits uh, will uh, show you uh, briefly the Age Cloud Online catalog. And Angel Giuliano, again from Across Limits, will uh, uh, point out how this could be interesting for you as well to promote uh, your own cloud initiatives. Uh, then we will have a pitch session. Uh, a few of our, a few representatives of the good practice we selected uh, will share with you some of their lessons learned and uh, activities in the area of cloud innovation. I hope there will be time for a few questions <clears throat> and. Uh, I will open the floor at that moment. And finally, uh, Federico Facca from Martel, the coordinator of HCAL project, will say a few words about how we will continue and how our work and research will continue after this webinar. This is today's program, but I also want to uh, point you to our upcoming events. It doesn't end today. In a month, on 11 November, there will be a workshop hosted by the European Commission on the Cloud to Edge to IoT continuum, uh, where Edge Cloud will participate. It's going to be very interesting for this area. And of course, on 8, 9 December 2021, we'll have the Horizon Cloud 2021 Summit, shaping the new strategy for cloud computing in Europe. Registrations are already open, and for once it will be an, an event in presence. So this will be uh, finally we are coming out of the COVID era when we could only do online events. So let's hope that this will work out well. Without further ado, let's go into my presentation about our catalog and good practices. Our project main goal uh, was tasked by the Commission to analyze the status quo of cloud landscape and provide recommendations for future work programs with the support of the European cloud community. So what we have done is to interact and create the H cloud forum community to facilitate coordination, collaboration, knowledge sharing and innovation. And in terms of our analysis, we have focused on three issues which are particularly important to drive the cloud innovation and evolution, uh, edge computing, cloud federation, and green computing. And we uh, worked on analyzing their role and relevance in different use cases and the barriers to adoption. Within this context, the DH cloud landscape is a key component of our activity and it's the one we illustrate today. We developed uh, uh, it's built on the investigation and profiling of private and public cloud initiatives, the identification of success stories and good practice examples dealing with the cloud innovation challenges. And as we said, this is all illustrated in the online catalog of these initiatives. Um, our focus is uh, to um, identify the positive outcome, outcomes and to create a viable knowledge resource. And this was done on the basis of desk research and interviews. So all the initiatives that uh, we profile in the catalog have been interviewed and have provided their own results and data for us. And what is our uh, catalog and portfolio today? At the moment, we have about 256 profiles. Uh, this means uh, a quite a good representation of the European cloud ecosystem. About 100 are research and innovation projects funded by the European Commission programs focused on pre-commercial development of cloud technologies, while the others' initiatives are public or private deployment initiatives and a few public-private partnerships. 
In the figure, uh, you see how many of these initiatives are focused on the three key development issues we are focused on. Uh, federated cloud models, edge computing, and green computing. Some of these initiatives fall in more than one category, so the totals are not uh, are higher than the total of initiatives profiles. You'll notice that a number, a high number of initiatives, mainly in the private market, are experimenting with federated collaborative models but not only, that the evolution towards edge computing is only starting. So the number of initiatives is not uh, huge, but is already around a third or, or so about it. And uh, um, the results, the evolution towards edge will only accelerate as the results of R&D projects on the edge will enter the market in the next years. And many of these projects are focused on platform as a service cloud models, which are increasing in relevance. The least uh, number of initiatives are those on green computing. And at the moment, uh, green computing is prioritized only by a small number of initiatives and is often a byproduct of efforts to improve the efficiency of cloud technologies. So uh, this means that, but it, this is increasing in importance, the focus on green, but at the moment, it is not the priority for many of these initiatives. Finally, slightly over half of our catalog initiatives do not have a specific focus on federation edge or green, but are engaged in the development of deployment of multi-cloud and hybrid cloud models. Overall, our landscape tells us that the European cloud market is maturing across all industries and technologies. To identify good practices out of this uh, universe, we went through a process of pre-selection of candidates, those that we felt uh, had the greatest potential, and in-depth interviews to verify their impacts according to four main categories, business impact, technology innovation, governance models, and data governance. And we selected 56 good practices, which are illustrated in the catalog and marked with a star. And who are these good practices? Uh, we have about the higher number is public and private initiatives because research projects for their particular type of uh, approach we, uh, are not uh, um, are more difficult to classify as good practices simply because uh, they uh, are not they are pre-commercial and we were more focused on deployment. But we still selected some of those in terms of projects which had, for example, a particular uh, uh, short time to market uh, path after the end of the research project or achieved some particular interesting uh, developments for our factors. If we look closely at the type of good practices, we have about 30 business impact uh, good practices, which means uh, um, good practices where the uh, number of users, the number, the revenues, and in general, the impact on adoption was particularly dynamic and growing. The quality of services is clearly the key success factors for them. We had 26 good practices for technology innovation. The criteria was uh, projects, initiatives, which were interested in edge or an other High, uh, highly innovative technologies such as artificial intelligence or next generation security. And out of these, uh, we have a number of uh, technology innovation, mainly in the private sector. In terms of governance, we have 15 good practices. We were interested in the ability to develop a successful cloud federated or collaborative model such as, as a procurement alliance and initiatives who had a substantial breadth of representation of the stakeholder ecosystem. In other words, we wanted to look for successful experiences uh, able to connect uh, different types of uh, organizations and clouds together and knit them in an efficient way. And we found a number of them. They tend to be more successful in the public sector than in the private sector, because the strategic incentive is strong to have full control over and sovereignty of IT infrastructure. 
and also the public sector is particularly interested to share data and insight across departments and agencies, whereas the business incentives to create a federation are less strong in the private sector. Nevertheless, also given the trend towards multi-cloud, we are starting to see examples of collaborative platforms, such as the Cloud 28 project, and an increasing interest in collaborative models. Finally, data governance. We know that this is a particularly important aspect for the uh, edge cloud IoT continuum, for example, which is emerging as the next stage of uh, cloud innovation. We were looking for uh, initiatives with efficient and effective data governance from the point of view of regulation and good practices, the implementation of data sovereignty for stakeholders, and effective and efficient data sharing. And we found about uh, 11 examples uh, which in various ways have achieved this kind of result. Finally, uh, we, has, we confirmed that uh, we only found about seven green IT experiences uh, and um, they are uh, at the same time uh, not uh, uh, still quite uh, evolving in terms of achieving and reducing environmental impacts. And uh, only one uh, case in the public sector and one in the pub private sector are focused on SMEs as a target, specifically SMEs. What are the lessons learned? I'm only giving a very brief uh, overview here because there is much more in the report on the good practices, which is uploaded on the website of the Age Cloud project and is public. You can share it, you can read it. I think our research highlighted that many challenges are being addressed, but there is still a long way to go to come up with a general set of good practices that can be applied broadly. From the point of view of federation, Adoption participation is a key success factor because uh, the, is, the increase in the number of users generates a positive network effect. And this is almost obvious. However, it is important to notice that this is difficult to achieve unless uh, over organizational resistance and competition uh, barriers are overcome. What we found is that uh, to achieve the benefits of collaborative programs in the, such as community clouds and federated clouds, is tied to the ability to bring people together through the service life cycle, from design and financing to implementation, operation, and consumption. So the good practices identified succeeded by creating organizational and cultural change mechanisms that foster collaboration and by establishing structures and processes that make the collaborative supply of cloud services efficient, effective, and compliant with regulation. Considering edge, we already said that uh, edge uh, innovation, even if it's much talked about, is still in, in its infancy. It has a high potential when combined with other technologies. Uh, the main challenges relate to the actual implementation of edge technology, which still has a number of hurdles to be overcome. Finally, as we said, green IT is uh, currently um, leveraged as a byproduct of efficiency in the development and deployment of uh, IT infrastructure rather than a strategic priority. But this is bound to be changing because uh, uh, the uh, green transition is a key uh, strategic uh, uh, objective for not only for European policy, but in general, is going to become an important target for enterprises and organizations as well, given the green deal and the new sensitivity uh, aspects which are coming up. And this is all for my uh, review of these good practices. I'm happy now to give the floor to Emanuele so that you can see in practice how our catalog works. Thank so. you, Gabriela. Thank you. So uh, first of all, I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so um, this is the main homepage of the catalog and you can access the catalog from here. I'm going to share this one with you so you can see it as well. 
Okay, so here we have the list of our initiatives. So uh, at the moment we have um, 253 initiatives, uh, but it is a number that is going to grow up, of course, in the future. So uh, what we have is this uh, system of filters because we have different types of initiatives. So from here, for example, you can select um, the profile type and uh, we can add also the geographical scope and keywords as well. And let's add, for example, the operating model. So after that, you just click on submit and you see uh, you have a filtered result. So uh, here we have six profile at the moment. Uh, and there is a difference because there are some of them which are marked with a star. So as Gabriela said, these are good practices. So let's see the difference between these ones. Okay. And like uh, we can open scale up, which is another initiative. So uh, here we have second okay so this is the main uh, profile of the good practice so as you can see there is a star here and this is the description the description of why it is uh, a good practice and here we have the success factors okay uh, in the meantime if we uh, go down we can find other details and same for the initiatives, but in this case, this is not a good practice. Here we just have details and you can access the official website of the initiative. And if you go down, you can see the list of the stakeholders and the map of stakeholders. So uh, this is about the catalog. And uh, finally, if you want to uh, submit your initiative to the catalog, just click on this button here. And uh, this is a form that uh, you can fill up with your details. And then you can download here the empty profile template uh, that we are going to evaluate, of course. I have already download, uh, downloaded a copy of it, which is uh, this one. So you just fill um, everything, all the fields here. And after that, you can upload it from here. This is an uploader. And if you have any comments or questions, uh, and of course you just click here for GDPR and submit the request. And this is really all for about the, the catalog. Uh, I don't know, Angel, do you want to add something? Yes, uh, thank you, Emanuele. I just wanted you know, to reinforce uh, um, the issue that we are still looking for initiatives and good practices for our HCloud catalog. And this is also a great way to make sure that your project, your initiative gets known around Europe. So in the future, we aim also every now and then to feature some of these initiatives on our social media networks. And like Gabriella said, um, as you have seen, we'd like, uh, I mean, we'd like everybody to submit, of course, but it would be lovely if we could get uh, also, for example, more green ICT initiatives, more SME specific uh, initiatives, because that will make the catalog richer. And like this, this is like you will hear later on from Federico. Um, this is not an initiative which will die with the end of the project. We will keep, uh, keep it updated. And therefore we really invite you all in order to be part of this catalog with us. And in fact, like I told you, given that we are uh, also featuring some of these initiatives, uh, we will continue now by hearing from some of the initiatives themselves. So I pass on to Gabriella now to introduce the different pitches. Thank you. Thank you, Angel. Thank you very much, Angel. And I think it's uh, it was really interesting. So um, what we wanted to do is to be uh, even more concrete. And we invited four 
of our um, good practices representatives to participate to this session, to this webinar, and to share their experiences with you. So I'm going to call, first of all, Andreas Ocklenburg of Cloud SME. Andrea, if you want to start, here we are. Thank okay. You. Hello to everybody. Uh, and thank you, Gabriela, for uh, giving us uh, the opportunity to present our, uh, our journey. And uh, it's about our company. It's uh, Cloud SME located in Germany. And uh, our services, what we are offering to the market are mostly demand driven and they are typically as a service. So we are building on the paradigm change which came up with uh, the cloud computing itself. Um, let's make a short journey about our history. So the journey started in uh, 2013, so quite a while ago with the Cloud SME project. And out of the Cloud SME project, the Cloud SME company was funded uh, at the beginning of 2016. Uh, since then, we are a commercial company uh, and providing cloud services uh, to companies, but also to uh, innovation actions and also to research projects. So we, our company is also supported by an international advisory board out of the former, uh, out of the former research project with leading IT and simulation experts. And our business is the operation and the further development of the cloud broker platform and uh, on private portals, which are building on the cloud broker platform. And we, are, we, and we also provide software development with a focus on cloud native and scaling technologies. Um, yes, we are a member uh, since, uh, since the beginning, we are a member of the I4MS initiative and current we are engaged in one Horizon 2020 project, the Digital Brain project, and this is dealing with uh, uh, digital twins and related technologies. Um, so about the Cloud Broker platform, the Cloud Broker platform is a multi-cloud platform, it means with one login, you are able to, uh, to access different cloud uh, operators means different data centers. So we are uh, able to connect to Azure, we are able to connect to OpenStack, uh, to OpenNebula, and also uh, to connect to discrete HPC systems, for example. What is an outstanding feature of our middleware platform is that there is a monitoring and accounting system uh, integrated. So we are able to charge our customers directly after their usage of our portal, if they like. Typically, we are uh, focused on monthly billing. So this is about our uh, about the Cloud Broker platform. The Cloud Broker platform is also, provide, is also used by different Horizon 2020 projects, just as a, as a computing platform uh, for, uh, for the uh, use cases and experiments. Um, let's go on. So uh, the main thing we are working on in the last month is our MGORA digital workspace for engineering. So this is an interactive workspace for manufacturing engineering. And uh, the uh, outstanding thing here is that we are not focusing only on offering software as a service with monthly billing. Uh, so, but we are also focusing on uh, on the collaborative aspects, bringing uh, experts ex and expertise together with SMEs, which are interested in our technology. Um, the, we in Cloud SME, we will be the commercial operator of this Angora workspace. And the Angora workspace, uh, the commercial version of it, will come up in a few, let's say in a few days, or let's say in two weeks, then we will start with the alpha phase of the MGORA workspace. And everybody who is joining here today, you are invited also to be part of our growing community. And therefore, to be informed, please pick the QR code on, in the left side, uh, register there on our newsletter system, then you will receive uh, the news. Yeah, then you will receive the news from us and how the evolution takes place from the Angora workspace. Another opportunity to get some information about this is have a look at blog.angora.eu. There we have some preliminary informations about this Angora workspace. 
and the VMGoer workspace itself, it is an outcome of the cloud refactoring project, which ended a few days ago, end of September. And we have been part since, of this since the beginning. And uh, just to mention it, the DigiBrain initiative, so what is, uh, what is dealing with the digital twins, this is building on the technology which is used in Mgora workspace. So that's all from my side as an inspiration and uh, thank you, let's stay in touch together. And uh, yeah, just to mention, we are uh, also members in different uh, communities. For example, in the NAFEMS organization, the biggest, uh, the biggest nonprofit organization for simulation and optimization by, with simulation and also artificial, artificial intelligence methods. Then we are also member of the European, uh, of the European cloud initiative, Euro native cloud initiative. And also, as I mentioned before, in the I4MS project. And that's all from my side. And thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Andreas. I think this was really interesting. And uh, um, you have a long list of initiatives of collaboration. <laughs> I think it will be uh, difficult to choose the one uh, to pick, but it's really a good example of uh, the new type of uh, collaborative initiatives which are coming up, especially for helping companies to work with the multi-cloud environment. So I want to invite next uh, Teresa Girbal from ESPAP, from the public sector. And I know that she will have some interesting things to say about how the public uh, sector deals with this uh, kind of multi-cloud and uh, difficult environment. Teresa, the floor is yours. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much, Gabriel, and thank you, EDC, for inviting me to be here and talk a little bit about the, 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 the journey that we are actually um, doing and starting doing better in, in the cloud environment in Portugal. We have uh, in Portugal um, announced and defined the strategy for cloud um, cloud adoption in public administration uh, recently. And we are still in a way to, to, to have, to create instruments to help the public entities to do a good adoption of cloud in, um, in the various areas, a good, safe, uh, efficient uh, cloud adoption. I'm from ESHPAP, which is the shared services company for public administration. We have um, uh, four major um, service, shared services, which are financial and accounting, uh, HR, public procurement, and ICT. So, and since we serve all the public administration's entities, uh, we, are, we have a very good uh, input and we are helping with the rest of the uh, with the, the rest of the entities to help to build this strategy um, just to have an idea on our strategy which is um, cl public cloud first but uh, in a smart intelligent and uh, efficient way and secure way to adopt cloud so we uh, as ESPAP, we have done already some cloud adoptions and during the lockdown, it was clear, for example, in, a, um, in the, the workspace environment, the, the decisions that we have taken have helped us to put all, almost 100% of our employees at home, working from home in a safe environment in a few days only. And that had to do a lot with the decisions that we have taken already. So not only the the the, the office the 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 mail the mail the collabor collaborative tools that we have um, decided internally help to have our employees and then company to continue work in uh, in a good and safe way and we have not uh, lose efficiency on the contrary, in some cases, we were even able to produce better and more. So this uh, have bring us some agility and flexibility on, uh, on, on to our employees to do their work. But it's not only that. 
we have already uh, some cloud adoptions in some specific applications in various areas, in public environment, in uh, electronic uh, invoicing and some others, and even some um, indicators and BI's situations with trees as uh, Gabriella presented on, on, on her presentation, the information which is more and more critical for the government to share with everybody. So um, that is also some information that with uh, our way to, to adopt this new uh, hybrid clouds, which is whenever it's possible and with the criteria, with the framework that we have already defined it for, for public um, entities, which help us to evaluate not only the security, which, which system should be in the cloud, which kind of cloud model with the criteria of legal, of financial, of uh, governance, of technology, which help us um, of, of the, the public entities to define which systems should go to cloud and which systems should stay in house. Um, or uh, which kind of cloud should be a, a public cloud, should be a private cloud and the way it should, should be done. So this help us also on, on, on taking good decisions when which system should go. And we're talking about new systems, we're talking about renewal, the systems that we have, we have a lot of legacy, we have a lot of information on legacy systems and how to deal with that. And to decomponing, for example, those kind of um, challenge uh, will help us to have a better approach, which become, of course, uh, the, the public administrations and to them, to the, to the citizens with a better response, a faster response and a secure response. So that has been our, our journey. Um, we still have a, a long way to go. It's um, also a culture uh, impact on, on, on um, how to deal with cloud uh, in the public environment, even more than, than the, in the in the private uh, private companies, but this is something that uh, we are doing it in our own house. I mean, in, in the SHPAP, but we are also helping our the rest of the entities to do the same. So to go gradually in a secure way, but to to actually push it because public uh, procurement is always a challenge. Is the process, is the time, and having, um, for example. Uh, these solutions and available to not only infrastructure, but also applications help us to do in a more agile way. So that is, is also what we, we want, uh, the response of the, the, the public entities. So this is a, a very good moment to talk about and to push a little bit, not only for sure, not only in Portugal, but also to face, uh, to face the, the, these new moments which are uh, after pandemic and how to evolve and everything. So I think we are absolutely in a good environment, environment and time to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Teresa. I must say it feels good to hear a public administration talk about agility. It's really something you don't usually think of uh, thinking of government. So I think it's a good uh, good way continue so and let's hope that after the covid uh, now that we're getting out of the emergency not all the benefits of using technology will be forgotten because uh, uh, there there is going to be a return wave and let's let's hope it's not completely traditional but thank you very much i want to give the floor to Zoltan Mann uh, Zoltan is here for two projects one is uh, rest assured which was profiled in our catalog but now is about fog protect, fog protect, which is now ongoing on a very sensitive and critical issue, which is data protection. Zoltan, to you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so um, my name is Zoltan Mann. Um, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm um, currently an associate professor at the University of, of Amsterdam, but I have just recently joined. And um, until recently, I was a senior researcher at the University of Duisburg in, in, in Germany. And much of, of what I will talk about now was actually done uh, during my, my work at, uh, at the University of Duisburg-Essen. 
Um, parallel to that, I'm, I'm also active in the BDVA, that's the Big Data Value Association, a, a European nonprofit uh, organization for big data. And uh, within that, I'm, I'm leading the, the subgroup on, on data protection. Um, so the, the, the two projects that I talk about are also about data protection uh, in the cloud. And um, as, as Gabriel already mentioned, the first project uh, was called uh, Rest Assured. Um, you can see it here, Rest Assured, Secure Data Processing in the Cloud, which was a Horizon 2020 research and innovation project. And it ended uh, at the end of 2019. And um, so this project was about protecting sensitive data in the cloud, ensuring that data that is stored, processed, um, and transferred um, in the cloud um, obeys some data protection um, policies and regulations. Um, we also had a strong focus on runtime data protection, meaning that during operations, so when, when the system is, is operating um, and when things can actually change, uh, we can still ensure the same level of, of data protection. To, to achieve that, we combined uh, several different uh, approaches. So one of them on, on the technology level was about uh, using secure hardware, hardware enclaves like SGX um, technology and other types of uh, secure um, processors, um, but also advanced uh, cryptographic uh, algorithms. But this is, this is you know, the, the technology level. And uh, on that basis, we also um, applied other um, techniques like uh, sticky policies, for example, to, um, to know what and how uh, has to be protected. We also used uh, self-adaptation in a, in a model-based uh, fashion to ensure that, that we can uh, react to changes. So um, whenever there is a change in the cloud, something is migrated or uh, whatever happens, which can have an, an impact on data protection, then we can, we can react automatically to, to such changes. And to enable that, uh, we also needed automated risk management so that we can, we can reason uh, about data protection risks during runtime. So all this um, is, is happening automatically, and it's really the, the interplay of these four types of technologies that, um, that allow us to, to ensure data protection in, in the cloud. If you're interested, um, you can see uh, the, the link to the project website and um, a publication that uh, explains what we, what we did in, in this project. Um, for the moment, let me, let me jump to the, the second project that I wanted to, to briefly introduce. It's called FOC Protect, Protecting Sensitive Data in the Computing Continuum. And this is really um, a continuation of, of Rest Assured. So it um, builds upon Rest Assured that it extends Rest Assured technologies to um, the computing continuum. So we don't just consider the cloud, but also fog and edge nodes and devices. And um, the aim of, of this project is to ensure data protection across this whole computing continuum. And in another dimension also across the whole data lifecycle. And again, we need to, uh, to combine different types of technologies, secure data portability, um, security management, risk management, and um, service management to ensure that um, all levels uh, actually cooperate and cooperate, um, coordinate with each other to ensure data protection um, with good levels of performance, cost, um, and, and also energy consumption. So we, we call this uh, the increased management capabilities. So um, this is really what this project is about, increasing the management capabilities that are present in, in, in a computing continuum um, to ensure data protection. Um, this is also a Horizon 2020 project, uh, which is ongoing. It, it, it started uh, last year and will uh, go until the end of next year. Um, again, if you are interested, um, take a look at the project website. You already have uh, quite a number of um, interesting um, things to, 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 to find there. And also here we have a, a preliminary publication that explains in more detail what this project is about. Um, but for now, uh, let me just uh, conclude with a couple of uh, takeaway messages. So um, one thing is that um, the cloud landscape is, is becoming more and more complicated. So also our um, journey from the cloud to the computing continuum is, is I think an example of, of that. There are more and more actors, more and more um, components, different types of, of connections between those components that have to be taken into account, be it cloud federation, be it hybrid cloud, or be it uh, edge computing. Um, the other thing is, is that data protection um, continues to be crucial. So if, if, if you want cloud services to be adopted, uh, you have to ensure that, that sensitive data is protected. And this is becoming also increasingly difficult as, as cloud systems become more and more complicated. 
on the positive side, we have many different techniques for protecting data, like different types of cryptography and um, secure hardware and secure multi-party computation, you name it. But the, the challenge is how you can really apply them. And in many cases, you have to combine multiple techniques. And this is, um, in, in my eyes, one of the biggest challenges. There is really a huge gap here between theory and, and, and practice. And this is what, what our projects uh, are, are aiming at. Um, so this uh, increased management capabilities of, of FOC Protect go exactly into this direction of combining and applying existing technologies um, and to ensure that we can really um, guarantee data protection. Thank you very much. Um, that was all from my side. Thank you, Zoltan. And I, that's exactly uh, what you said last, that your project was focused on the technology challenges, but from a practical point of view, is exactly why we highlighted uh, your line of research and your projects. I think this is a challenge which really requires a solution, and it's one of those where um, there is a greater activity, and I think companies are ready to uh, pick up uh, uh, the solutions which come out of it. So we have one more speaker, and then I think we'll have time for a quick question or two. So if you want to ask questions, please raise your hands or um, um, write your question in the chat. But I want to give the floor to Gert Mattelinks. Apologies for mispronouncing your name, sure, but from threefold. Gert, up to you. Hello. Um, no worries about this uh, uh, misspelling. It was good. <laughs> um, I'm here uh, working for Threefold, a Belgian based company um, um, who has developed the technology basically to, um, to address the, the issues around uh, federation and decentralization in general. And if I could summarize our technology, it's, it's um, I could compare it to energy sector where um, solar panels. Um, exist next to big power plants uh, and, and provide uh, fine-grained um, energy to, 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 to the, the public. Uh, there we, compared to big huge data centers, we can uh, put three nodes in a user basement or in, a, in any household, let's say, um, providing internet capacity, cloud capacity. Um, we aim for decentralization basically um, in two ways. Um, the first one is, let's say, geographic decentralization, making cloud, edge cloud possible, making um, the, the, the capacity available close to where it is consumed, basically. And the next uh, type of decentralization is, is about um, ownership of data, because it, it's about also. Um, people being in control about their own digital life. And in that regard, it requires quite a lot of security and privacy preserving measures. Now, how do we do this? Um, uh, we believe that it's uh, from uh, um, the best way to, to get there is, is to work as close as possible to the hardware. Um, and that means it's an operating system that needs to be um, um, updated, let's say, in order to make this all, all happen. Because an operating system is basically uh, the, the place where you can combine uh, storage, compute, and network all elements which um, together form, form cloud capacity to, to make them interact in a, in, a, in a way that is private, that is secure, and that is uh, where it's possible to, to, to operate on the edge. Um, we have um, we, we have a, a compatibility in mind and also hardware that is, is on the market. Um, it's important we believe that that we could uh, build on top of what is already existing in the current cloud uh, market. In terms of compatibility, for example, we have still a Linux kernel, meaning that any workload that runs on Linux such as containers uh, orchestrated in a Kubernetes uh, can run on the, on the network. It uses uh, IPv6, the new uh, IP standard. Um, it can run on, on existing uh, infrastructure indeed. Um, scalability was a very important element. Um, 
and in that regard, we believe that it, it, well, it should be able to run millions of nodes, IoT devices, etc. So there, um, it, it should also be able to 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 um, run on infrastructure that is all over the place, uh, and that means that the um, the hyperscale model, where where a lot of hardware is concentrated in one big room, is no longer valid. So you have to um, use a method to, that, that, that deals with that. And uh, of course, that means also reliability as there is no, um, no system administrator um, in, every, in every basement able to, to restore uh, uh, things when, when things go wrong. Okay, uh, security, uh, privacy by design, um, everything has been thought over and we could do so by really acting on operation system operating system level, privacy by design, meaning with a network in there that is fully encrypted, with the storage that is intelligently split over different nodes, even by different cloud providers. So in a way that the, the data remains safe, and we can even say quantum safe as um, with incomplete data, even a quantum computer cannot reveal uh, what, what the real data is, is all about. Um, we're an open source technology, so um, feel free to join. It will stimulate collaboration, capable for the edge. Um, and um, the advantage is also that it, um, it's, we believe it's quite low on capital requirement as um, hyperscalers should, is, are quite capital intensive. We believe uh, as it, uh, uh, there's a lot of investment needed even also for providing of energy um, whereas here, um, everything can be uh, cooled through the air, etc., as the, the, the hardware is less densely packed, etc., which gives also some um, advantage in, in terms of sustainability and, and energy efficiency. Um, we already have a, a working prototype, which is available on testnet, which is quite substantial, I must say. Um, we already have about 80 petabytes of storage connected to this grid of uh, capacity, about 24,000 core devices. Uh, and we're currently uh, launching workloads on it using the standard uh, way, uh, virtual machines, uh, containers, uh, Kubernetes, et cetera. So um, we are, we are uh, ready basically to, to, uh, to show what we can bring um, on the market. Um, Still a bit of testing needed, but um, almost we're almost there. Um, what is needed basically in order to get there? Well, it's three components, I would say. This operating system that I mentioned, able to combine uh, very smartly uh, compute capacity, um, storage, uh, memory, and network. Uh, it requires also a degree of uh, extensive automation as I said, um, having a, a manual, a human, human uh, system administrator next to each device, it doesn't work. So you need to have this um, self, uh, self healing, self driving, self driving software, meaning that if uh, a node goes out, some other node can take it over and there, there are auto detection mechanisms in place. And then um, next to that, there's also um, a consensus, it runs on a, a blockchain in order to incentivize the hardware providers um, to, to, to make capacity available because they get rewarded with that. And, and also the, the, the payment, the financial flows can then happen inside the system. So um, these three components combined with that, we believe that we have um, solved basically um, 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 in a pretty elegant way, um, the, the, the decentralization issues and uh, and also the the issues that are are uh, created in in the in a centralized cloud context. Uh, here you have an overview. Um, we need to um, take care of all these elements, um, and we believe we, we have um, we have uh, we are quite far with that. Uh, there is plenty more to, uh, to explore. Um, you can find info on our website and uh, on an extensive wiki, uh, the library.freefall.me gives a um, 
extensive overview of uh, how we achieve uh, this uh, degree of decentralization, feel free to contact me also if you have uh, more questions. I thank you. Thank you very much, Gert. I think it's very interesting, your example of peer-to-peer -peer network in this area. So we have heard from our speakers. I would like to ask if somebody uh, has a question. Now is the moment to ask. I think uh, there is a comment in the chat by Tron Joannesen. You want to make your comment, perhaps? I see indeed, well, how can you say low latency on blockchain in the same context? You have yes. to use indeed very intelligently the usage of blockchain or not. Blockchain in our technology is uh, mainly used for, um, for immutable storage of what, what has been agreed, basically. So that is only at the start, let's say, and, and, and for maintaining the uptime of, a, of, a, of workload uh, and for payment purposes. So um, the, the making available the, 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 the capacity, et cetera, it's not all happening on a blockchain. Eh? Be aware of that blockchain is only one small component of what we bring. So indeed, uh, it, I absolutely agree. You should not put all on blockchain, but um, you should use it um, where it's uh, really needed and um, where, where it brings value. And I believe that is limited to make things immutable and to um, support in a, in a financial um, flow uh, process. Thank you very much. And uh, are there any other questions? If not, I will give the floor to Federico Facca, our project coordinator, for wrapping up uh, this webinar and talking about us. Thank you, Federico. Thank you very much, uh, Gabriella. Uh, I hope uh, my screen is uh, up. Mm. So yeah. very shortly, uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining today. Uh, I hope uh, um, more uh, projects will be interested in uh, getting registered and, uh, and uh, recognized in the catalog. Uh, I think this is an important effort uh, for uh, the community to understand uh, who is doing what and uh, what are the interesting approaches that uh, define uh, uh, best practices or good example to follow to create impact uh, using uh, uh, innovative uh, cloud-based uh, solution. Uh, say that, uh, and uh, of course, through the online catalog, you have all the link to uh, contact us and uh, to pro propose uh, your uh, uh, solution or organization in there. So that I want to... Uh, remind you of two initiatives that uh, uh, two events that are gonna happen in in the next uh, few months one is an event uh, that we are organizing uh, in support of the European Commission which is on 11th of November and um, the purpose of this event will be about uh, presenting uh, the calls of the next year but also it will give uh, uh, the floor to expert uh, from the industry and the research to discuss what will be uh, relevant priorities for the work program that will be uh, published for 2023 and 2024. So I think this is uh, really an interesting um, event to look at. And then <clears throat> like uh, uh, last year, uh, uh, on 8 and 9 December, we will have uh, our uh, summit. This year, uh, uh, it will be co-located with the Cloud Expo Europe. So uh, um, it will be a physical event uh, with all the COVID uh, uh, control and uh, um, regulation in place. So this, of course, means that you need to bring your green pass to get there. But we will also broadcast the event online if you cannot uh, join physically. 
And uh, this will be uh, uh, another important opportunity for uh, many actors of the community to discuss together and to uh, also present their uh, uh, stories uh, like the one we heard uh, today. So I invite you to have a look at the programs of both events and uh, to register because I'm sure these are interesting to you. And uh, I think this is everything for today. So thank you again very much for uh, joining us. And uh, I hope uh, you will follow uh, the next uh, actions we will uh, uh, organize and, uh, and also the upcoming release of the white paper. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.